<laughs> how do I talk to more girls, right? Mm. Very common question with the young boys. Very, very, in the 2022, Yeah. very valid question. Very valid question. And you know, you obviously hear about people like Andrew Tate and these people that a lot of young kids are literally idolizing. Like they love these people and you know, like respect for these kids for liking these people, but they don't realize like who they are kind of thing. They want to be like that person. I was the same, you know. When I was younger, I wanted to be like Vin Diesel or something, you know what I mean? something like that. For yeah, Ymir is a person that you idolize. Exactly, exactly. But obviously, because you're only seeing a social media aspect of that person, you only see one side of that person. And so, you know, you obviously hear these kids, they might say things like, uh, like F being in a relationship, like there's no point. But they're only saying that because that's their ego kind of coming in. Is it attack? Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have Gareth Shanthi Kumar. Yes. With us today, he is uh, the head of, founder of Man Up WA. So uh, the blokes out there, this is the podcast for you. This episode, value packed, and uh, let's get into it. Thanks sure. for coming in. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be here <laughs> and share what I have. So, yeah. So how is everything? It's going well. It's going well. You know, as you know, it's been a busy couple of weeks leading up to sort of today with us getting ready for that the TEDx talk that we did. Um, I think just in general, it's been a busy period for me because we have a lot of events usually around this time of the year. So I think since last weekend, I'm finally relaxing in a bit. And what relaxing means is essentially not having an event every weekend. So very excited to just kind of calm down, focus a bit of work, focus on getting ready for next year as well. Mm. Um, it's sort of like resetting some strategy and some goals. So, yeah. 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 And your, <laughs> and your uh, work, you say... You're getting into events. Is that part of your work or is it just like being you? Being me. It's a bit of both. Yeah. So um, like recently, the reason why we had big events coming up was uh, my family, we, we run a charity that's focused on helping people in Sri Lanka. So we have like an annual cocktail gala. So that was what we had last Saturday. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's right. Um, but yeah, it went well. So it's like the big thing we do every year. So Everything kind of leads up to it. Takes a few months to plan it. My sister does most of the planning. I'm just there on the night um, to show my face and speak a little bit. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's been busy with um, even with Man Up, the work that we do there. We tend to have all our main events around this October time. Uh, we recently had our quiz night, where that that again is our annual fundraiser, where we try to raise money for our foundation itself. Mm. Um, that's more of like a, a fun vibe. Like it's not too serious that event, um, but it's. It's difficult getting it already, getting everyone to come around, getting the sponsors, things like that. So, yeah, a bit of both, bit of me, bit of work as well. So, mm. it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, keeps me busy. Keeps Enjoying busy. it? Yeah, I would say so. So, you know, obviously, my main sort of work right now is I'm a personal trainer. Um, I work through Revo Fitness, um, and I love it honestly. Like, I actually picked it up as a bit of a side job to allow flexibility to focus on manner because obviously as a PT, you actually control your hours. Um, and so I was like, let me pick this up on the side um, so I can focus on man up. But as I started diving into it, um, it picked up, you know, and I also kind of realized it's so much more than just showing people how to use the gym, but it's showing people how to fall in love with their bodies, form better habits, um, build a relationship with themselves. And so I think through that, I kind of prioritized it a bit more this year. Um, and it got to a level where I didn't expect it to be. I started exactly a year ago, um, and it's sort of at a level now where it's self-sustaining, it's going well. Um, and the cool thing is, because it's completely my own thing, I can really be flexible to allow myself to still be available for Man Up. But with Man Up, I've got a whole team, so it's not just me. I've got about 10 boys that um, were all voluntary uh, working in this organization. I think everyone's driven by the passion to be there. Um, because I think all of us have had some sort of experience around our own mental health, um, around this understanding of what it means to be a man. So we're kind of coming together to inspire the next generation of high school kids to grow up into healthier men, to maybe not do the same mistakes that we did, you know, and I'm sure you've been there as well. So it's busy, but I would say I'm very fulfilled in a sense. I'm still trying to get to the level where, you know, doing the kind of holistic work around fitness and mindset is sort of my full-time career. Um, I still work for my dad at McDonald's as well. Still? So, yeah, so I work one shift a week. So actually after this, I'll be heading over there um, Friday nights and Saturday mornings sometimes. Well, the, the drive through Kind of everything. So I was a shift manager, but now I sort of train managers to be better managers. Yeah. Um, and that's because sort of that was where my skills lie and it's kind of in that coaching aspect. Um, so I still work with him and it's a good gig. Like I do have a lot of flexibility around that as well. And 
I guess, you know, working for my dad is sort of this idea of like, uh, I, I want to help him out as well you know, as much as I can whilst I'm still here. Um, so yeah, I guess sustaining three sort of jobs right now, keeping me busy, but because I've kind of formed the passions into the job, it doesn't really feel like I'm working as much. So, yeah. yeah. What did you mean by whilst you're still here? Oh, whilst I'm, whilst I'm still sort of, um, working through with like Maccas, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. obviously I'm thinking of, you know, moving, moving different cities, things like that. So whilst I'm in Perth and I'm building this foundation for man up for my other sort of careers, I'm going to definitely keep working at Maccas just to help him out. Yeah. So you have three different things you do, which mm. is amazing. Yeah. You know, helping your dad. And he has how many restaurants? Um, about to have seven. So seven. six at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Six yeah. restaurants. And I met the guy. Yes. Um, out <laughs> in uh, Mindari. Great yep. guy. Yep. Um, I still have content with him. I haven't posted yet. Oh, really? <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just timing it. Yep. And yeah, really, really intelligent, really well-spoken man. Mm. And you know, apple doesn't fall <laughs> far from the tree. Um, maybe better looking. <laughs> um, but um, if you could drop, it's part of my TEDx talk, mm -hmm. if you could drop everything but keep one thing, mm. what would it be? Man up. Why haven't you done that yet? I think at the moment, the reason why I haven't is, is again, it's just the, the fear of taking that risk, right? Because right now Man up provides me with no income at all. Um, right now it's driven by not just me as well. Because I know that if I if it was just me, a different story. But the fact that I've got a whole team around it, um, I'm also like the co-founder, so there's someone else who's got just as much input in it as as I do. So I think um, the reason why I haven't completely let it go is well, obviously security is one thing. Um, and I think the second thing is, although I love the work, it's still a vehicle for sort of where I want to end up. If that makes sense. And where is that? I think I want to. Similar to what I talked about in the TEDx talk, I think I want to share my vulnerability, you know what I mean? Uh, find a way to allow people to um, step into that version of themselves that will help them become the best version of themselves. So that might look like coaching. It might look like one-on-one -on -one type work. It might look like creating programs, creating companies like Man Up and just doing more of them. I get really bored with the day-to-day -day stuff, like sending emails, um, going to networking events with people that aren't there for passion. Um, and that's been tough with Man Up. Like I'm lucky that I don't have to do that. I get my boys to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and I just show my face and speak. So I think in terms of the actual job itself, if I did Man Up, I'll be quite bored in that sense. I, I like the aspect that I get to do a lot of things at once. Um, but I guess eventually, you know, like, like I said, with this PT stuff, I want to sort of see how I can get to the next level where potentially I can go into more like coaching rather than just physical, but more mindset habits um, as helping younger people as well. Uh, but this year I kind of gave myself a year to just get it out there. You know what I mean? Cause where I was a year ago, completely different place. Um, what do you think changed that? I think it was events happening this year to make me realize that we've only got one life. And if I don't go all in, as you said, if I don't go all in, I'm lost, you know? And so, uh, I, I, a big change came around like m my use of social media as well. I used to really care what people thought about me. And I guess a part of me still does, but I used to not post our content online because I think there was that fear of like, what are my old friends gonna think about me or people that I went to school with? Cause I think in Australia as well, there's this huge thing around like tall puppy syndrome, you know, like when you're successful or when you try things differently, they'll try to cut you down. Yeah. Um, and even when I you know, became a PT, it was almost a disguise to post content online. And I started posting fitness content, but I also started posting content where I would speak about things to do with mindset and emotions. Um, and at the start, you know, I definitely had people messaging me saying, what qualification do you have to speak about these things? And honestly, the only qualification was my experience, if that <laughs> made sense. Um, and that kind of threw me off at the start a little bit. But then as I posted it, because PT was my business and I needed clients, I got clients through online. Yeah. And so when I realized that there was like a, an actual tangible benefit, like I was getting clients, um, posting became a part of my job, you know? So it was like an excuse for me to keep posting more stuff because I'm a PT, that's how I get my business done. But eventually I'll, I don't want to be doing it just for that reason. And so, you know, like I said, I started PT a year ago. Within a year, I've got like, you know, 30 clients sort of locked in, um, which is honestly like something I couldn't even thought of doing. You know, when I first started, it was quite a scary thing. Um, and I think the main element was just like not caring what others thought about me. That's changed a lot on social media. Yeah. So you still talk to those school friends or those 
older friends. Yeah, I mean, only the good ones, you know. Only the good ones. Yeah, the ones that don't matter anymore, they'll unfollow me, all good, you know. There's Will nothing. they lurk in the background? Probably, yeah. I have a few of those. Yeah? I have, I have um, mates that I hadn't talked to in years and they still look at my stories. <laughs> or I talk to them maybe from time to time, mm. maybe once every couple months. Yeah. And we would chat and there'd be something of an action coming out of that yeah. for them. Yeah. Because I can see that they want to do what I want to do. Yeah. 100%. What I am doing. 100%. But they don't take action. Mm. And I'm like, well, I can only lead the horse to water. Yeah. And then I remember when I started TikTok, I had people telling me, like the students first, they were like, sir, that's cringe. Yeah. And then two years later, they're like, sir, that's actually kind of really cool. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Clout chases. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but the friends, it's a really interesting part. They say to me, that's cringe, man. That's like, what are you doing? Hmm. And now, you know, I've got my little studio yeah. thing. I'm trying it out, see what happens. Hmm. I've got a big following. I'm working with big brands. Hmm. I'm getting free shit. That's fun. Um, and I do what I love every day. Yeah. And I'm making good money from it. Hmm. Those people don't talk to me anymore. Yeah. And I look at their lives and I look at what they post sometimes and they post negative things, mm. complaining mm. about the job. And I'm saying, you know what? You know what's actually cringe? Working the nine to five <laughs> and not, not liking it. Yeah. That's cringe. That's cringe. Yeah. And that's where I start to separate myself just yeah. naturally. Like yeah. if someone wants to reach out and hang out, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. But now I'm getting to that point where it's like, what's the agenda? Mm. What do you want to come out of this? Right. What, you know, do you want something? Just, just let me know. Mm. Just don't beat around the bush. Don't bullshit. Yep. Oh, it's just a g general catch up. I'm like, okay. Do you find yourself like generally catching up with someone these days is far less and it's more of like a, a business thing or you're talking about ideas mm. more than anything? I think so. But I, I feel, I find a challenge with that is I feel like a lot of people my age, cause I'm 24. Yeah. Everyone's kind of now only entering that nine to five lifestyle and already, you know, within a lot of my clients that I train, I can see how everything they've been told was like a lie around that kind of lifestyle. They don't like it. They've thought that once they get the job, they'll be all good. So they're kind of only having that realization, which I sort of had maybe four years ago now. So my catch ups are still very, uh, one dimensional in a sense, but I'm trying to, um, get into an environment where I can meet people like that. And usually they're my sister's friends or they're a bit older than me. Um, and yeah, those conversations are, they're crazy because, you know, you go into it and you feel energized afterwards. Like there are people out there that value the same things as you. Um, and it's exciting because it gives me hope. You know, I used to think, oh, Perth, there's nothing to do here. But there actually is a community if you open your eyes to it. Um, and so I feel like I'm entering it, if that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. Welcome. But yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so going back to... At 24, what you know now and how you speak, mm. I'm, I'm envious. <laughs> I'm 31 and I figured this stuff out, well, started to figure it out. You're never perfect. Yeah, exactly. Probably three years ago. Um, and the most important question I ask myself every day is, what am I doing today to buy my time back? Mm. It's a selfish question right. for myself. Yeah. And that's selfish because if I'm financially free, mm which means that I have residual income paying for my basic cost of living, I can do whatever I want. Yep. Or I could work towards whatever I want mm -hmm. without over leveraging, over extending myself. And then these people you see, you talk about that enter the nine to five and they got lied to. Yep. And this, this will segue into the man up. Yeah, for sure. They get into the nine to five and they're like, cool, I got a job. Yep. I got a I got an income. What next? Yeah. What next? Mm. And then I talk about self-awareness, financial freedom or financial fitness. Yep. First financial freedom comes later mm -hmm. and then pivoting, the yep. art of pivoting, yep. pivoting to be able to do whatever you want. Yep. All three have to kind of work together. Mm. Some argue that uh, fi the, the finance part isn't there, yep. but my argument is what if you don't want to do something anymore? You come to that crossroad, right? Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of early 20s people come to that crossroad and and it's after something like studying at uni 
It's yep. after getting a permanent job. Hmm. It's after signing a contract. It's after also over leverage, overextending their mortgage. Yep. First home buyer's mortgage. Yep. They're stuck. Yeah. Soon after they realize, so I've got a job, I've got a wife, I've got kids. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sometimes it's early 20s. Yeah. And then, and I'm saying a lot of the, the men, this isn't, this is an observation. This isn't generalization. This is just observation. You can call it both, but the men, especially in FIFO, mm. early, early 20s, mm -hmm. they get given a six figure salary. And they go through all of that. They check all the life boxes really quickly because they're in a rush for some reason. Yeah. Well, that's what we've been told to do, right? And then, yeah. And then in mid-20s, going towards their 30s, they hate their lives. Mm -hmm. They get, they, they, they're stressed. They have anxiety. They get depression. And then what, what's worse after that, right? Exactly. So how, how have you positioned yourself to help those people with Man Up? Mm. For sure, for sure. I think a key to everything you said is sort of having that sense of fulfillment, right? Purpose. Um, and with the nine to five, because that's kind of what we've been told to do, it's a very external motivation, like get the job, to get the house, to get the wife, whatever it might be. But I think it's rare that people often stop to, the, to just think about like, who am I? And what do I want to provide to this earth? And, and how do I want to live? And they usually only have those questions come about when it's a bit too late. Not too late, but it's they're older, they've wasted some years where they could have been doing that stuff. So with with Man Up and you know, the reason why Man Up even started was sort of me having that realization earlier on though. You know, it was the realization of who the hell am I right now? Because it was at my lowest point when like my girlfriend broke up with me, when I had no idea where I wanted to go as a career. I would get really angry and bottle things in and when it all exploded, I was sort of left at that rock bottom, I would say, where I was just chilling, but I had no idea who I was, yeah. And what really got me out of that hole was obviously supportive people around me, which is really important, but it was self, like development on myself, you know, like figuring out what is my value in this earth? Like, what do I want to sort of give back? Um, how do I want to experience it? Because often it's rare that people will just stop to ask themselves those questions, yeah. Uh, and so when I did that, I really came to like six months later after all this you know, this, this whole boiling point happened. Uh, I was sort of at a stage where, although I had nothing on the outside, on the inside, I had a clear sort of vision and trajectory of where I wanted to, to go and, and what I wanted to inspire leaving this earth. And so I think from there, everything changed. And from there, my self-worth became really important. I started prioritizing my own boundaries, the things that make me feel happy, feel alive. Um, I started taking care of my, my physical, so going to the gym, eating well, um, and again, I kept on hanging around the correct people, people with the same dreams and goals and people that wanted to grow. And I think, you know, you heard that quote, it's like the five people you surround yeah. yourself with is who you end up becoming. And it's so true because it's not the people you're closest to, it's the people you spend the most time with. And sometimes often we're around people because of work. So we're naturally going to get their energy, right? So with Man Up, we run three separate workshops to the boys. In an, in an effort to sort of give them the skills or maybe plant some seeds in their head so that when they do get older and challenges happen, they know what to do, right? So our three sort of workshop uh, follows male culture and that's helping young men understand that to be a man is not about being this traditional masculine guy all the time. It's about flowing in and out of your own understanding of masculinity because that pressure is huge, right? The pressure to get a job, be strong all the time, get lots of women. And if you don't, then you're less of a man. The thoughts that went through my mind that really left me feeling worthless. So we try to instill with them, how can they become a whole human being first and foremost, and then maybe dive into more masculine traits or whatever it might be. Um, we then talk about relationships. And with that as well, we talk about how they can prioritize a relationship with themselves. Like what is the most important relationship? It's the one you have with yourself. Once they know what their boundaries are and their non-negotiables in life, they'll be sure that whoever they surround themselves with won't affect that, yeah? Because it's very easy for young men, especially to get into romantic situations where they completely let themselves go to be there and be everything to this, this person, right? And that's when we start to go down those dark rabbit holes of the mental health is when we sacrifice our own worth for someone else. But if you can fill your own cup, you can give from the overflow. That's what I always say, right? Um, and the third one we talk about is male mental health coping. And that's how we equip the boys with sort of skills um, or better ways of dealing with the natural emotions of life. You can't stop being sad, 
or you can learn to go to the gym or punching a, uh, instead of punching a wall, right? Healthier coping mechanisms. We can teach the boys to talk to a mate instead of keeping it all in here and that leading to something worse. And so I think, you know, right now we're aimed at high school boys because we're a little bit older than them. We're caught sort of like their older brothers, if that makes sense. And we share with them our experiences in an effort to inspire them. And I know that it works because I have these kids follow me on Instagram and after the session, they'll say, thank you so much for opening my mind and allowing me to have these conversations. Um, and obviously, because we're quite a new organization, we don't know if these boys are going to grow into healthy men. We don't know. But the fact that we change their mindset in that moment, we know that it's sort of working, if that makes sense. Yeah, I really hope that um, I really see it going forward further. And, you know, the hardest part about it is it's a passion of yours. Mm. And I see that, you know, monetizing it could potentially mm. bring yeah, it down. Exactly. Because, and this is the reality, right? No one wants to invest in that. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is, should be the complete opposite. <laughs> Everybody should be investing in it. Mm, mm. It's like, it's our future. Yeah. Like we invest in education mm. and that's also another rabbit hole that can be <laughs> gone down. Uh, but um, the mental health part or, or even the pre mental health before it gets, gets to that spot. Yep. What you're doing that needs to be really looked at mm. because then the healthcare system gets a bit of a, you know, cushion. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that's the thing I noticed about the world. Um, there's a lot of problems and they're throwing money at the problem. They're yep. not throwing money at a solution mm. or a prevention. But we can go into the dark rabbit hole around that as well. You know, you know, yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, Apart, yes, once it happens, it sucks and you've got to deal with it. Mm. But isn't it so much easier if you avoid it in the first place mm. through education, through systems and programs and workshops? It's, it's so important to, to think about that. And, you know, these things that we're doing, we have to juggle other things in, our, in ourselves. Yeah. We also have to get through it first, you know. I don't... I don't really think I've ever been in a super dark place. Mm. Um, and people would hear that and go, oh, okay, well, what do you know then? <laughs> but I feel like I was instilled with confidence and, and self, that self-awareness. And, and my mum is always telling me, like, don't worry about the bullies. Who are they? You're, not, <laughs> you're never going to see them again. Yep. They're not going to be relevant to you. Yep. And if they are, then later on then they either won which you're not going to allow that to happen or they changed for the better mm. and that's true mm -hmm. that's been true and my resilience from my mother's teachings has been very very fortunate yeah coming from a russian background a lot of my russian friends family yeah there's so much more resilience right like we would hang out and it would just be a completely different vibe mm. Ethnics in general. Yeah, for sure. I hung out with ethnics in general. You're, you're Sri Lankan? Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, there's, there's another pattern I'm seeing here. Yes. Yeah. The ethnic people mm. that come in, the immigrants, they have more chill. <laughs> they have more perspective. They yeah. have more of that understanding of what, what the alternative is. Oh, 100%. I would be somewhere probably crossing the borders of Ukraine right now if I mm. stayed in Russia. Mm. You know, luckily I was in Kyrgyzstan because it was a different country by then, but who knows? Yep. And then now I'm looking at here, right? Um, chilling, hanging out, and I'm hearing people complain about things that I don't even have to do with themselves. Yeah. Yep. Like Kanye, for example. <laughs> Everyone's going hard on Kanye, making memes and shit. Some of them are funny. Yep. But you got to just like, how's your life going? Exactly, yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you bring value to somebody else? Do you bring value to yourself? Mm. So, you know, I, I really wish that people can look in deeper into themselves and go, right, what am I doing here? Am yeah. I happy? Yeah. Am I loving what I'm doing? Mm. And really wish the higher up people in, in the political world, <laughs> uh, one, uh, helping the education system improve, yep. which is something that seriously needed to be it's done. getting there. Yeah. 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 And yeah, the uh, mental health system or the health system in general, 
prevention is so much better than a cure. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, the, recently they've made like consent education a huge, you know, like focus for next year going into schools, which is really cool because that's what we are trying to preach. So I guess it, it does work, but it just takes time, you know. And often it does take something going wrong in your life for you to realize I need to make a difference. Preventative and, stuff is hard. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully you have the right people in that time that help you through it. Yep. Because if there's not, you can go into all sorts. Mm. And yeah. we're, we're seeing more and more, everyone's just doing their own thing and not having that family to help support them. Yep. Going back to the ethnics, the yeah. ethnics, <laughs> they actually do have the family to support them. It's true. Mm. But I'm seeing the, uh, the, how do I call them? Like the, the third, fourth, fifth generation Australians. Yeah. I'm seeing less of that. Mm. Right. And I'm thinking, what the hell? But then that bleeds into the immigrants. The immigrants become first gen, second gen, yeah. third gen yeah. Australians as well. And this is the same thing around the world, mm. um, more so in the Western countries. Yep. Um, yep, definitely. And then you see the Sudanese in their country. They're having many children and their, their life, uh, everything that's happening in their world is far less greater than ours. Yep. But they're more happy. Mm. Why is that? Perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, so man up. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And is there, is there opportunity for you to really get something where you can go all in on it and really grow it? Yeah, I think there is for sure. Like, like I said, the government is really getting around us as an organization. I think what we need help with is really just like structuralizing things because none of us are business people in the sense, right? We just had a passion to make an impact but now it's gone to a point where we need to actually figure out to pay someone we need like a lawyer to help us with this and that so I think you know if we, when we can get help around that then we can really go all in in the sense of like how can we make this like a, a job for someone or a career for someone and mm-hmm. keep it going um, but yeah I think what I've learned is because right now we're all voluntary it's tough but we're kind of in the cycle of like because we're voluntary it's taking longer but if we just had like, you know, position, a paid position, for example, we might be able to fast forward that a bit. Yeah. Um, but like I said, uh, uh, the fact that we've grown so much in just two years is, is proof that we are doing quite a bit right now. Next year, we've got huge plans as well, like a huge kind of change in, in leadership. Um, we're going to get a board organized so we can actually keep it going for the future. Um, and yeah, sort of see how we go, because finally we've got this backing from the government now which almost ensures longevity for the next three years. Hey. Um, and that's really exciting. Yeah. So I think it's just sort of to see where it goes. And, you know, you know when you start anything, it's going to be real shaky. Yeah. But I can sort of see it settling a little bit, not completely, because, again, a business can just fail like that if you neglect it. Mm. Um, but the fact that we've gone two and a half years really strong and we're getting stronger is proof that I think as long as we keep doing what we're doing, eventually we'll be where we need to be. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I, I'm huge on, like, not rushing things. Like... If, as long as I'm having fun right now and Im- impacting people in a good way, I know that it will just happen the way it needs. So the universe always sort of makes that happen, you know, um, when you go into it without that anxiety. Because sometimes I get really caught in, in like that controlling mode of trying to control every outcome. And whenever I try to do that, it always sort of leads to me feeling anxious, therefore not being able to give my best self in that situation. So allowing it to sort of just go at the pace it needs to um, is really helpful as well. What's well, been the most uh, biggest success for Man Up so far? Oh, it's too many, man. Um, Something just comes to mind. Yeah. It so, makes you smile every time you think about okay, it. Okay, okay. It's a bit sentimental. It's, I think it's just seeing the community that we formed. Because like I said, when we started this, it was to help high school kids, right? But the way that we operate is we have a whole database of volunteers and we're the guys that go into the school to speak to the kids. We don't just do like this big workshop where there's like a whiteboard and one person talking. It's 10 of us will go in and split the cohort of 100 kids into groups of 10, and we each share our own stories and have the, and run the workshop, right? And, and through that, we have done like rural trips where we'll take 16 volunteers, 12 volunteers, and we'll travel uh, WA, giving workshops to schools that don't really have this opportunity, right? So already we've done about seven trips. You know, we've gone to Bunbury a few times and covered the schools in that southwest. We've done Esperance. We've done um, Katanning. We're about to do Esperance soon as well. Um, and the really cool, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. And the really amazing thing about this rural trips is that 
by daytime, you know, we're speaking to the kids and inspiring these kids. And also these kids are way more grateful than kids in Perth for some reason. <laughs> I think because they just don't have people coming outside often. Yeah, that's that, again, that perspective. Exactly right? that. I went, I, I lived overseas, mm. born overseas, mm -hmm. and I lived in Kalgoorlie. Yeah. So I've got the, the country element yeah. and the city element all in one for and sure. the overseas element. For sure. Go on. And obviously makes you more of a whole human being. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we do the trips. So by daytime, we're talking to the boys. But in the evening, we get the opportunity to really bond with each other. And I think, like I said, growing up as a young man now, it's very difficult. Like, what does it mean to be a man? Because you see so much things happening where it's easy for men to feel guilty for just being a man. Um, but we kind of create this space where we can be vulnerable with each other. Yeah. But then we can also chat some shit, you know, like we can be a healthy human being and we're like role modeling it to each other. So I think as Man Up grows, we're creating this whole new community of what it means to be like a healthy young man. I never had that role model growing up, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you've had your dads and stuff like that, but there was never, like, on the TV, you don't really see what it means to be, like, a healthy man. You only see this macho, aggressive man. Overproduced. Overproduced, filtered. yeah. Filtered. Yeah, but at mm. the same time, this man's, like, you know, depressed, angry, all that kind of stuff. So I think um, the community, and there was one trip where I went, um, took the boys, like, it was only five of us, it was a small trip, and there was a night where we'd finished all the schools, and it was just us chilling. Um, and we went to like the pub just to enjoy. And then we came back home and it, it was a really nice moment where these four young men who are younger than me were just talking about like their darkest sort of moments. So like things with breakups and all that kind of stuff happening. And I remember just sitting there reflecting like, wow, like this is happening right now. Like there's a space where these boys can just chat. They were like strangers before. And now they're tight talking about their deepest, darkest, you know, secrets and problems and at the end of it, we become really close. So that's why the community is really tight now. We're really small still, but it's so nice to see that Man Up has created this like yeah. extra byproduct, not just for the students, but for these volunteers. That's amazing. Mm. And that's something that's definitely worth sharing more often. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then with the kids, um, what's something that you see common or uh, what's something that you're asked most often? By the kids? By the kids in, in the workshops. It's the most common question. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's a stupid question, but they're always like, <laughs> how do I talk to more girls, right? Mm. Very common question with the young boys. Very, very, in the 2022, Yeah. very valid question. Very valid question. And, you know, you obviously hear about people like Andrew Tate and these people that a lot of young kids are literally idolizing. Like, they love these people and you know, like respect for these kids for liking these people, but they don't realize like who they are kind of thing. They want to be like that person. I was the same, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to be like Vin Diesel or something, you know what I mean? something like that. For yeah, your mirror is a person that you idolize. Exactly, exactly. But obviously because you're only seeing a social media aspect of that person, you only see one side of that person. And so, you know, you obviously hear these kids, they might say things like, uh, like F being in a relationship, like there's no point. But they're only saying that because that's their ego kind of coming in as an attack. And so when I talk to the boys, you know, they're always telling me, like, how do you talk to girls or whatever? Because this is something that I had to learn as well. Because mm -hmm. when I was younger, I was really scared to talk to girls. And then there was a point where, you know, watching all these idols, I was like, how about I be a bit of a dick to get with girls, right? And it worked, you know what I mean? I would go to the clubs or whatever, act like I didn't care, um, and sort of go against the man-up values in a sense, right? And, but it worked because I got all these these women, you know, this attention. But as I've kind of grown even more now, I'm sort of realizing if I'm acting like that, the type of woman that I'm going to attract is not going to be who I actually want to be with. Yeah. And if I'm changing myself to, to please someone else, they're going to expect that version of me. But that's not who I am. So I tell the boys, you know, obviously they're quite young, but I tell them right now it's, it's a very immature age, like, don't expect that the girls that you're going to be with right now are the ones that you're going to end up with for the rest of your life. But the goal here is how can you commit to being yourself? And if someone likes you for you, then that's the goal, right? And, you know, I tell them not to take everything that they see on social media so, like, directly. Realize that there's a whole other side of the story to it. And if there's a man who's a bit more soft-hearted, like, be that man. And then there will be a woman that will find that attractive. But if you're more of a macho man, be that man. Like, you don't need to change yourself. You don't need to try and catch every fish. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But, you know, because I see these guys are like, I want to be like that, I want to be like that. A big role model for me, actually, with Man Up was, um, there's this actor in America called Justin Baldoni. And he runs a podcast, actually. It's called um, We Are Man Enough, I think. And his whole thing was, you know, when he was an actor, 
he was always cast as a very good looking, like shirtless guy. Um, and he thought that was who he was. But then, you know, as he sort of realized it, he was like, actually, um, for me, being a man is so much more about being compassionate, being kind, but still embodying those masculine traditional traits. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, I was like, how can I sort of, you know, em embody healthier masculinity rather than just one sided, one dimensional? Because the one dimensional is what leads to the mental health problems later on. And there was a study that was done, it's called the Man Box Study, which basically analyzed boys who were 15 to 30. Uh, and they asked them a series of questions which basically categorized them as being traditionally masculine or non-traditionally masculine. Uh, and they would ask the boy, the men questions, uh, for example, like to be a man means you have to be strong, yeah? To be a man means you need to be a breadwinner. And the word was like, you need to, like you should. To be a man, you should get with lots of girls. And so men who agreed with the statements, like they agreed that a man has to be like that. They were categorized as called inside the box thinkers. And then men who didn't really agree, they were more holistic, I guess, were categorized as outside the box thinkers. So that was part one of the study. Part two was when it got really interesting. They looked at these men's just lives, the quality of their life. And what they found was men who were inside the box thinkers, so the same men who believed that they had to be strong, they had to get lots of women, they had to make lots of money, these same men experienced significantly worse mental health outcomes, double the chances of suicidal thoughts, seven times the amount of sexual violence against women, and, and seven times the amount of getting into actual physical fights with other men. And you can see, like, where did this come from? It's because of the pressure, the pressure to be someone they're actually not. And so it comes out in some other way, which is a huge statistic to realize, because young boys, they don't realize that. They think to get lots of girls is respect, you know, to make lots of money is yeah, respect, and cool, it is. But then they don't realize that these same men are also struggling a lot in their lives. And I don't think anyone wants to be like that, you know? No, mm. it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Mm. And, the, uh, you know, you could, you could call it a red flag. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> and, yeah, I... But there's I, not, I always say there's nothing wrong in having lots of money and, no. and getting lots of girls, but it's wrong when you put your worth into it and yeah. when you feel like you need to do it. If you, if you lose your integrity doing something... To achieve a goal, is it actually worth it? Exactly. Never. Yeah. Never. This is the most one of the most important things in life is your integrity. Mm. Mm. And if you detach that with your to, from yourself, trying to achieve the things that you want, yep. Um, you realize most of the time those things are not what you need. Yeah. <laughs> and then by the time you figure out what you do need, your integrity is not there. Yep. And you're pretty much starting again, mm. which is fine. You know, people start again all the time. Yep. But they need to understand that. Mm. If they feel like they, they don't, then that's when real darkness happens. Oh, for sure. Are you going back to the um, talking to girls thing? Yeah. <laughs> no. um, it's such a stigma right now, especially with, um, you know, going up at, on, in a bar, yep. approaching someone, mm. fear of rejection mm. before it even happens. It yeah. happens. But then also not the fear of rejection, but f fear of them being disgusted and yep. and calling out something like, oh, you pervert yep. or whatever. Yeah, it's for sure, like, for sure. That's not helpful either. No. So there's a whole other side to this oh, 100%. that yeah. also needs to be catered to. Yeah. And there are people, you yeah. know, sort yeah, of yeah. women and, uh, organizing this. Um, for me, I remember my masculinity, toxic masculinity, mm. call it toxic masculinity, was – um, the, at the peak was when I was a footy player. Right. Huge alpha male egos, <laughs> yeah. toxic as fuck. <laughs> and, and, you know, I got into the, you know, how to talk to girls a bit better through them. Yeah. I was looking at them like, oh, they're all getting girls. I was doing the same. Because it works. Yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. But I was not happy. Yeah. Not, not was I happy around them or yeah. was I happy with – the women that I was actually talking to mm. that I thought, oh, cool. I'm, I'm, they like me, you know? Yeah. And then they never work out. Yeah. <laughs> never, they never, never end up happening. Yeah. And it's when you stop looking and just become yourself, mm. the real, real things are attracted. 100%, 100%. But also in the scheme of things, especially when you're younger, it's the same with, you know, escaping the rat race and getting a house and doing all that stuff. You do it with the wrong person, you're, you're stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> and you try to keep it, you try to make it happen, mm. but you have a kid, yeah. you have a couple of kids. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's just, it's just so many ways to do it wrong. Mm. And, you know, you, you, and then you learn afterwards. Yeah. But then you feel like you've, you've done a lot of your living. Yeah. 
and you you didn't set yourself up for for success from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And again, people have succeeded out of that. Of course, they've gotten divorced. They still have, they still raise their children well, and they figured it out. But there's so much out there that just goes horribly wrong in the wrong possible way. And then what happens with the kids? Yeah, same thing. Repeat the cycle, cycle. continues. Yeah. And those are the kids are, are most likely you're most likely dealing with. Yeah. Um, a, sure. As a former school teacher, that's the pattern that I found. Mm-hmm. The, the kids that were misbehaving, I didn't, I didn't blame them. No, no way. The parents yeah. were the, the reason, yeah. the cycle. But then and, it was because of their parents. Right. Exactly. Right. And yeah, it was fascinating. Mm. And you read about it, but when you really identify it, you know. Yeah. But then this is where the school system comes in. Mm. Again, observation. The school system fails to adhere to uh, understand that. Yeah. There are some schools out there. I know brilliant um, student student service yep. leaders that yep. have done a, an amazing job with a, a, a few schools that I've been involved in. Right. Some other schools completely cooked it. Mm. They try to get psychologists in. They try to get counsellors in. And the whole quiet quitting is a thing mm. in teaching. They don't care. Yeah. They're just there for, for the money. Mm. So there's a whole network of shit that's going <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And at the, um, at the sacrifice of the kids and the cycle continues. But the, for me, I got out of that cycle because mm. I just had enough. And that self-awareness flourished. Yep. I didn't grow up with a dad. Yep. My stepdad, the one that helped, you know, help us migrate to Australia, he was there for a little bit. We bonded through footy. And, but after that, it was just no connection. Mm. Never called him my dad. Yep. Called him by his first name. And, you know, he was a lot older than yep. my mum. Yep. And, you know, things didn't work out. And there was no bad blood. But just there was no good blood either. Mm-hmm. I haven't. I, I don't think about calling him at all. Yeah. And one day I actually decided to. Right. I was like, you know what? It's been a few years. Yeah, yeah. I'm a different person. Yeah. He might be a different person. The yeah. older you get, the harder it is to change. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Called him. Things were good. Went to visit him. Yeah. Couldn't talk to him after 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. But it's that detachment that I had from the beginning that didn't affect me at all. Yeah. What about you? What about your, you mentioned your relationship, the failed one. Mm. Not disrespecting, obviously, the ex-girlfriend, mm. but you're obviously not right for each other. Yeah. What made you think you were when you first started dating her? Um, I think it was sort of not realizing who I was in that sense, you know, because when we, we went out, well, we, we kind of went to high school together. I went to an all boys school, but we did a few classes together. Um, and it was sort of like right place, right time. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're convenient, you're next to them often. So you end up hanging out with them, obviously. Um, and so this was before I had even discovered who Gareth was. I was just living the, the rat race of school, you know, cycles in and out. Um, and so basically as soon as school finished, we got into a relationship because, you know, those feelings, infatuation. And the thing is, right, <clears throat> you will feel those feelings with heaps of people. Yeah. It's not just with the person that you're going to end up with. And so, you know, that's why often relationships at the start are really good because you're almost like clouded by this this drug of dopamine, right, This that just covers your body. And so when that wears off and then you actually find out who the person is um, or you even start to realize that I'm not this person anymore. Yeah. And that's another thing. We change, right, over time. Um then you, then you realize, okay, it's very difficult to force a connection to work when we're on completely different trajectories. Um, and I, I, I really believe in like repairing relationships, like that definitely can happen, but both of you need to be on the same page. Mm. Um, and you know, just like in our situation, we were, cause we were 18 to 20, like that's so young. You still figure out who you are. So obviously as we grew up, we grew apart. Yeah. It's very rare that people grow together. Very, very <laughs> few people grow together. Very few. I think I remember one couple. I don't know if they're together or not anymore. Yeah. But they were high school sweethearts. Yeah, yeah. And last time I checked, they, they were still together. I think mm. they had kids. Yeah. And I was like, damn. Yeah. Good, good for you. <laughs> but hopefully they're staying true to themselves. That's soon. the thing. That's the thing. I was in a relationship for five years, my longest relationship before now. Wow. Yeah. Before now, currently my wife, she's she's takes the reins. Yeah. Especially because she's my wife. <laughs> but my last relationship, it was the same thing. 
Yeah. We weren't we weren't the right people for one another. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go one way. She wanted to go another. Mm-hmm. But she wanted me to go with her. Yeah. And I wanted to be myself and mm. I wasn't myself. Mm. And it didn't take until my, my friend said to me, Sev, you're not the same person when she's around. Yep. You're more fun when she's not around. <laughs> and I took offense to that. Yep. I was in defense mode for yeah, her. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because I thought that's what men needed to do. Mm-hmm. But my definition of a man is like a real man. Masculinity is someone that is confident in their own belief of what they want, yep. what they go for, mm-hmm. and with integrity, yes, with good intent. But yeah, the the relationship never worked. It was it was always going to be a failure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But those early twenties years, one hundred percent, you're just like, oh, you got to make it, yeah. you know. And then you you meet their family and their family's nice and you don't want to be the bad guy. Yeah. And, and and you may be the bad guy momentarily, but if you if you don't do anything about it, you're the bad guy forever yeah. for yourself. For sure, for sure. And long story short, she ended up marrying someone two, three years after we broke up. There you go. And I found my wife. Yeah. Everybody wins. Yeah, exactly that. I'm stoked. <laughs> and like... You know, uh, and that's life. But the problem is it's not like that right now oh, no for a way. lot of, no a lot of people. <laughs> and there's religion comes into it and there's pros and cons to religion, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. is everything else. The Christian religion, Christianity, there's a lot of like, you know, the whole no, no sex before marriage mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. There's good things about that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's, not, there's some not good things about that. <laughs> yeah, know? I know. <laughs> and uh, are you are you celibate? No, are you? no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say no. <laughs> um, not at all. <laughs> but like, if you wait until marriage, you have that whole time to figure each other out. Mm-hmm. You see patience in one another, and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's an argument that they would definitely use. Oh, for sure. But then afterwards, you. What if you don't connect? It's post nut clarity, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that as a clip hard. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's one big nut too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Exactly. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> nah, kidding. I'm not, I'm not religious okay. at all. Um, but I respect the people that have. For sure. That, like whatever religion you're into, whatever your your faith is, mm-hmm, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't preach it on to me though. Yeah. You can talk about it, mm-hmm. but respect me for my decision. Well, for sure. Um, but yeah, going back to the relationship thing, uh, that's one of the most important things in your early twenties to realize that you're not, you, you're still young. You, yeah. you don't know where yeah. you're going to be. Yeah. And I, and I, I, um, I'm, I look at relationships and businesses very right. similar. Right. Early on and careers as well. Mm-hmm. Early on, you're still taste testing yep. what you want to do as a job. Yeah. yeah. You work at Mac's, yeah. you're a personal trainer, <laughs> you do all of the above yeah. at the same time, yeah. you know. Um, and I was a personal trainer and for I worked sure. at Hungry Jacks. Yeah, there you go. I worked at Bunnings. <laughs> I worked at Jester's for a while. Yep. And, you know, not before long after that, I was like, no thanks for <laughs> the uh, food industry, never yep. again. Yep. That and I just outgrew the benches and how low they were. <laughs> true, true. There's a clip of me recently at one of the McDonald's because I did the McCappy Day oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll pretend I'm working. Man, the benches are so yeah, low. It's very low. Designed for it's the kids. Low. It's fair enough. Perfect for you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but um, the business and relationships are very similar, yep. right? You, you fall in love with it. You, you, you do it day to day. Mm-hmm. And over time, you start to resent it. Yep. Oh, for sure. And then you go, oh, do I enjoy the overall scheme of things enough to keep doing it? Mm. Same with relationships. Yeah, it's a choice to keep it going. Yeah. Keep it healthy. Yeah. yeah, and you need to realize that it is a choice because if you think that you're shackled in, then you're going to just go south yeah. continuously. Yeah. It's not helpful for anybody. It's not helpful for them or mm-hmm. you or, God forbid, you have kids. Yeah. And that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like 50% of marriages end in divorce. More than 50%. More than that, yeah. 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 And, and and then the older folk, the ones that, oh, my grandparents have been together since they were 16. Because they had no other choice. Back then, it was the thing. <laughs> right now, it's like, 
bro, live your, live your best life. We're, we're animals. <laughs> we're meant to, you know, have fun and enjoy ourselves and yep. move on. We don't have to be sluts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like, but like the biggest flex, and I'm seeing a lot of these masculine um, Instagram pages. Right. I follow one. Mm-hmm. They're all about tanning your balls and having a llama and shit. I like it. I like it. Eating liver. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you heard that one? Liver king. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Not quite like that, but okay. yeah. But there's, there's one common theme all the time is it's not a flex to sleep with as many women as possible. Oh, no. Nah. It is such a flex to find the right one, start a family with. Yeah. And you don't argue. You don't fuck around. Mm-hmm. You're, you're a team. You build an empire together. Yep. And, you know, if that happens very early on in your life, that is such a flex. Yeah. That is a flex. That's fucking flex. That's the goal, yeah. That is the goal. Yeah. But in reality, it doesn't happen because you still haven't found yourself. And the whole emotional maturity thing, we're not emotionally mature until we're very, very much later in our 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And sexual maturity doesn't mature until later in our 30s as well, especially Chilly. women. Chilly. Yeah. You know, and, but, but where we're in, it's such a rush. Yeah. And then all everything else unfolds <laughs> after we've locked each other in. And then we're like, oh, fuck, FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. Yeah, yeah. And that's where cheating can happen mm-hmm. because you're like, oh. I never got to do that when I was young. I locked, uh, locked myself away there. And then you have regret. Yep. And then the temptation might even get you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. Same with jobs. You lock yourself in, you get that mortgage, and then all of a sudden you're like, I really don't want to do this job anymore. The day-to-day sucks. Yep. And, you know, I had a job in uh, as a glassy, like okay. a window manufacturer in Malaga right, right. when I was like 20 years old. I remember rocking up. I was like, oh, good. The dopamine was hitting. I'm like, yes, i got a job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, you know, I get six, $700 a week. How good's this? Mm. Within two months, I was getting up, barely making it to work with one minute to spare. <laughs> okay, because you're done. I yeah. was done. Yeah. But I needed money. Yeah. Right? So, and like, and that's why I really relate relationships with business. Oh, for sure. With, with for sure. work. Because the, the girls as well, different, different times in their lives, mm. you know, one girl's younger, one girl's older. I'm, I'm older, I'm younger, whatever. Yep. But just, it's so hard to, like, it's so obvious now when you're older and you want to tell them, you want to go, bruh, chill. <laughs> Relax, yeah. <laughs> chill, don't. Don't, you know, if you love her, you love her. Yeah. But make sure you you really get to know her. Yep. Or him or whatever. Yeah. And don't compromise yourself. Don't compromise. Don't. Exactly. <clears throat> I remember mm. I compromised so much in myself. And I look at this in hindsight. Mm. Back then I was blind. I of was course. like. Because nah, it's a drug. It's a drug. This is good. Literally. This yeah. is good. This yeah. is good. And I see it to others now. And, and. This is my relationship I'm in right now. I'm fucking stoked. And I'm not just saying that, you know. I'm mm. genuinely stoked. That's the goal. Genuinely <laughs> stoked. It's been five years now, like fucking stoked. Yeah. But then I see others, not that I'm like trying to compare or make myself feel even better. Mm-hmm. But when, when I see someone else arguing, and arguing is not the worst thing, <laughs> but I'm just like, why are you, why don't you sort yourselves out, you know? <laughs> And, and like, it's life's too short to be upset. Mm. But that's the thing, though. I think you're in a healthy relationship because you figured yourself out. Yeah. You know They're on that path as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And not many people do that. No. And it's, and it's easy to project it onto someone else. Like I've done it. I'm speaking from experience here. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, with business, you're, you're, you're pushing different directions mm-hmm. and you, you lock yourself in and then, man, those golden handcuffs... <laughs> I'm so, yeah. so lucky that I didn't get into that spot. Yeah. I was very close, yeah. you know. I was very close to finishing graduating uni and being with someone that had the whole life planned out. Yep. Life's not meant to be planned out. No. Opportunities come that tempt you to want to try something different in life. And, you know, I'm with my wife. I'm not saying if a better opportunity comes along, I'm going to say <laughs> goodbye to her. <laughs> Yep. You know, I've lived long enough and been in, in enough relationships and, and moments that my boxes are firm. Yeah. Like, like girls and boys say, oh, uh, more, more girls nowadays. Oh, I'm so picky. I'm never going to find someone. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Fucking be picky. Don't yep. be, don't, don't settle for anything less. Yep. Yep. You know, be realistic. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and, you know, there's a whole thing about Perth. There's no one in Perth. I'm yeah. like, well, fucking move then. <laughs> exactly, yeah. For sure, you know? for sure. Um, but then with guys, they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. I've, I've had many conversations in both mm. groups, mm -hmm. single girls, single guys. Yeah. I had a conversation with two girls the other, the other week. They're all, they're in, the one's 22, 23, and another one's 25. Right. They're sick of men here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but what are you looking for? Yeah. What is it? And we talked about it. And I'm like, what are your things that you want in a guy? Mm. And they were, they gave me some really interesting answers. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but is that realistic? Is that realistic? Yeah. 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 Are those the real values you want to look for? But then I ask them, how do the guys behave? Mm. And the guys behave like animals. Like just, I'm just like, are you serious? Is that <laughs> how it is? Then when I talk to the guys, yep. they're just like, oh, girls are just, they're just bitches. I'm like, why are they bitches? How do you come to that conclusion? Yep. You know, I come from a neutral, like of I'm Switzerland. Yeah. I'm Swiss, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm like, I'm married too. Like I've, I know my shit. And I'm, I'm genuinely stoked. Mm. But, yeah, when I hear the people, like, bicker about one another and I'm like, okay, yeah. let's break it down. Mm. What do you want in life? For sure, for right? sure. But I think now it's very hard because there's so much choice, like so much choice when it comes to a partner. So if you find someone who's 95% what you want, mm. you're like, oh, what if, there'll be someone that's 100. Swipe left, you know what I mean? Oh. And, and I think that's what's making it very hard for people to actually accept healthy relationships is because there's so much choice. Literally, if you get upset, download Tinder, right? It's right there. I met my wife on Tinder. Well, there you go. But in terms of like as a coping mechanism, a lot of people will jump to it. You know what I mean? To like- Validate. Validate. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, and I think that's, that's huge. You yeah. know, that's a big thing that's stopping people from whenever there's conflict from actually working through it. It's, well, F them. I'll just go find someone else. You know? do, you, do you have a, a, a missus in your life at the moment? Not at the moment. No. 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 Yeah. Unfortunately not. No, you're 24 though. <laughs> yeah, I'm young. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's a good space to be single. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying good space to be single and, and promiscuous. Oh, no, no. That's a good space because you're still figuring yourself out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you have figured yourself out, then the right person will come. And I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When I, when I broke, I broke up with my last partner, I had a four month gap before yep. I met my wife. There you go. And I was on Tinder. <laughs> the first time I was on Tinder. And I was, you know, the, the whole hoe phase mm. was real. Yeah. Not going to lie. <laughs> but it got exhausting so quickly. Yep. And I'm not saying like what a champ I am and all that shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, this isn't me. Yep. And I was like, oh, I, I, I was very happy to say that. I was like, I don't think I need to be, you know, seeing multiple women yep. at once. I feel I'm disrespecting them. Mm. you know one at a time or one for now yeah you know my attention needs to be all in one yeah and then i was like you know what stuff it no more tinder yeah no more tinder i'm not going to do the validation thing i'm not going to get you know um what, what the next greatest thing mm -hmm. but i was like okay one more for bands and then that's when you found her huh? that's what happened because you let go of that desperation exactly literally the same fucking day yeah I, I shit you not. <laughs> Scroll down. I was like, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> She's tall. I was like, oh, God. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. And she had black hair. And I was like, mm. that's your type. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hit her up. Hit it off. Yep. And then after that, it was, again, <laughs> Like I, I'm not a, like a fan of ghosting. You got to be real. Mm -hmm. But it was just like a end of season clear the bench sort of moment for everyone else. For everyone yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. It was like you know, mm. and it was so cool. Mm. But at the same time, I felt so guilty. Yeah. Because I had built up some sort of not like relationship full on. It was, it was like a short period of time, and they don't hold it against me. Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably did back then. <laughs> But that's where I found myself, and it was beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, and then Sabine told her stories about it. She's just like, "I won." <laughs> <laughs> but then that was it. Yep. I was, yep. I was focused. I there was it like, it's like I found my purpose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then with with the business, with the career side of things, right now, I'm doing multiple things. Yeah. As you are too. Yeah. I can't wait to find my Sabine in business. For sure. You know, because sure. then you're like, oh fuck, I don't. 
Like I don't give a shit about anything else. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the grind. I'm enjoying yep. the trenches. I'm enjoying all of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm trying to figure out what's next. Yeah. Or which one do I yeah. choose? I'm the same as you. But yeah. you kind of have a tra- trajectory of where yeah. you want to go, right? Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, like people fall out of love. Yep. And I don't like talking about this much because <laughs> the theory is true yep. for anybody. Mm-hmm. You never know. But with her, it's like, oof, without doubt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But life happens. Mm. And we've even talked about it. Life mm-hmm. happens. Yep. We have kids. We're going to be civil. Mm. If fucking whatever, for some reason, we cannot figure out what it is. But you mentioned before, like, going into different, like, growing together and then yeah. growing apart. Yeah. You shouldn't hate each other for that. Oh, no way. It's you have to communicate though. Yep. And you have to be civil. You have to be friends. And the worst thing you can do is if you grow apart, Drag one someone. Yeah. tries to go, because yeah. they're not going to be happy. No. So that's where you've got to reassess, mm-hmm. communicate and things like that. Like right now we are really unbalanced yep. in our relationship. Yep. And we're not at dire straits or anything. She's a student doing her thing and I'm building my my empire. empire yeah. She doesn't want to be part of the business empire. She wants she wants to hear about it. She's yeah. interested. Yeah. As do I want to hear about her studies mm. and what she wants to do. And right now we're at a severe imbalance. Right. Because we need to hustle. We need mm-hmm. to eat shit. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then afterwards we're going to come in and it's going to be such a better balance. Yep. And I thought about it so many times. I'm like, is it going to be a good balance? Is it? I'm looking at it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I can see it. I can see it good. Mm-hmm. And the biggest factor about balance is finance. Yeah. It's where that big one comes in. If you have money problems from the beginning and you don't have that set expectations of who who can buy what or whatever, if you have a treasurer and you're fucking, you know, <laughs> you've got to be responsible with money. For sure. But you need your own bank account, their own bank account, and then a together Combined bank one. account. Yep. That's exactly. one bonus tip for everybody. Yeah, for sure. I can do that shit. <laughs> Straight away, figure that shit out. And if she spends money, her money on dumb shit, or You're if he spends money on the absolute dumbest thing, it's not your problem. Exactly. It's their money. Exactly that. You get that started. Yeah. 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 So there's my <laughs> no, <I love laughs> relationship it. advice. <laughs> I, fully, I fully agree with that. And like you said, the whole growing apart thing, like, so my parents actually divorced as well. Yeah. Um, and they kind of stayed together until I was older. Um, but even when they sort of split it, I was very lucky that I saw a role model of a healthy breakup in a sense, because right now, like our parents, my parents are very amicable. Like they still will go to our birthdays and hang out, cook each other dinners, stuff like that. Um, and I remember speaking to my dad once and obviously they were shattered when it happened. They were very sad, upset. I've never seen my dad like cry like that before, but you know, he, he reflecting on, he was like, do you think that I thought I was going to get divorced when we were getting married? And I was like, probably not. She's, he's like, of course not. But we grew apart. And that was something that kind of hit me because it made me realize that maybe relationships aren't always meant to be forever, you know? They're in your life for a reason, and for a season, uh, however long that might be. Because even with your wife, even if you end up with her forever, one of you is going to die before the other, right? And so, again, you can look at that like in a really depressing kind of point of view where you can look at that as that this person has been there by my side for a specific reason, you know what I mean? Um, and that's important. And that's why even because I have two ex-girlfriends, I look at both of them with very, like a lot of respect and a lot of love still, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to be with them love, but it's love that this person made me who I am today. And if it wasn't for the, the time that we had, the arguments that we might've had, I wouldn't be the person I am today, you know what I mean? And that's crazy. It's Cause I always, I really fantasize relationships. Like I want to find my wife and it's going to change my life and be there forever. And you know what I mean? Like really romantic. And that's because of society, what it's done, right? We watch, we grew up watching Disney shows. We, what, we grow up thinking that love is meant to f- be this feeling, but I think love is actually a choice uh, and, and we need to commit to it every single day. Yeah. And sometimes that choice might be to grow apart. That's still love. That's unconditional love. It's loving them regardless of who they are, where they are, whatever they're doing. You just love them for the person. And I think that's, that's the goal as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So if you had uh, a whole bunch of kids in front of you, <laughs> then you've given them so much value today. Yeah. What's the one thing that you repeat to them over and over? What's the one big piece of advice you give to them if to they the were kids. never to find you? Okay. Uh, 
it would probably be to take time to figure out who they are. Every day when you wake up, ask the question, who am I? And whatever answer comes to your mind, do what you need to do to align that image with yourself. I love that. Love yeah. that. So how do we get a, uh, around with uh, Man Up WA and how do we sponsor you? For sure, for sure. We- so obviously, um, well, our Instagram handle is, is man underscore up underscore WA. You can sort of follow our journey through there. Um, but obviously, if you want to get more involved, you can always send us an email. We're team at manupwa.org.au. Um, all of us are really keen to like get help and, and meet people as well because we're all young. I'm the oldest in the whole organization. So it's really lovely when we have, you know, government support or people with experience are willing to kind of jump in and help us. We're always willing to take that on. So that'll be the best way you guys can help us is just start a conversation. Mm. Nice, nice. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for ha- coming in. Oh, thank you for having <laughs> me. I learned a lot from you just sitting here listening to the wisdom. So <laughs> for sure, for sure. And uh, thank you for listening um, and watching the, uh, the video side of things. If you have any questions for Gareth, uh, mm-hmm. there is a questions box on the Spotify uh, section. If you're not on Spotify, you're on the uh, iTunes or the podcast uh, app, then uh, hit up myself or, or Gareth mm-hmm. and uh, ask away. And he's, he and I are always keen for questions, life advice, or just just a chat. Um, come in with some purpose. Don't just say hi. <laughs> um, if you have something to ask, make sure it's something of you know value to you. Um, that you can take something out. But yeah, until next time, Gareth, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. As always, good thanks.